My last video was a two-part Q&A, and since it's been a while and I've had to really kind of sit and stew and think about a lot of the questions that were asked, it brought up a lot of interesting points. It also brought up a lot of memories. And one of the things that it brought up, I just, I wanted to touch on a few of those, but one of the first things that comes to mind was somebody asked me what I would change or what I would either change or bring back from the 90s that I feel like it would kind of enrich the current goth scene. And one of those things is the fact that there's no 18 and older clubs to get into anymore. Not only that, but there's no kind of all age events. And now that I'm obviously old enough to get into events, be it clubs or shows, I kind of take that sort of thing for granted and it's not something that affects me anymore. But when I was younger, it was such a huge deal to me because not only did we have sort of all age goth events, which were typically held on Sundays when there was no school on Monday because that was when it was easier for everybody to attend because there was no way a parent was gonna allow their child to go out when there was school on Monday and there was also no way that an event was going to sacrifice their weekend on a bunch of kids. So on a night when there was a Sunday, no school on Monday, that was typically the night that you would have these kind of all age events. But there were other ones here and there. However, what was really important were the 18 to enter, 21 to drink events. These were really important because this is when a lot of us got to kind of go out and experience things. And these were formative years for us. And I, as well as my friends, we were very naughty because when we were getting into these nights, we weren't 18. We were 14, 15, 16, 17, but certainly not 18. So when I first started going to my 18 to enter 21 to drink events, I was not of age, which was bad, but I made sure that the IDs that I used were never 21 plus. Now that served twofold kind of functions. One, it was much more inconspicuous and less likely to kind of get you caught and not allowed to enter when you're under the drinking age. Because once you were 21 and older to get in, you kind of were a bit of a liability. So they needed to make for damn sure that you were of age, because if not, they could lose their license, they can have their club shut down. However, if you were presenting not old enough to drink anyway, there was less of an issue. So of course they drew the big X's on your hands. So the bartenders knew not to serve you and we went in. So for many years we walked around with Sharpie marker X's on our hands and, and it was okay. We didn't mind because we weren't there to drink anyway. It wasn't the point of going to these events. The point was we really wanted to integrate with the subculture so bad. We wanted to see what was out there. We wanted to hear our music. That was one of the main things. We wanted to hear the music in our environment, among our people, and really just experience. And that in itself was more, could do far more than any underage drinking ever could. I didn't drink anyway. Uh, I still don't. It's never really been my thing. And, and from what I remember with my friends and their kind of foray and experimentation with alcohol, they didn't like it either. They ended up getting sick, throwing up, crying a lot, and it just didn't look like a whole lot of fun. And I don't think they enjoyed it either. So when it came to that kind of thing, we were more for the experience. That's what it really was all about. We wanted to meet people. We wanted to be accepted. We wanted to hear the music. We wanted to see our favorite bands. That's what it was all about. Screw all that other stuff. So being able to get into these places, I don't want to speak for my friends, but for me, being able to go into these events at such a young age, being able to integrate, with the subculture see things, uh, but I was more of an observer. I really like to watch and kind of glean the situation from afar. Plus I was a little bit shy and I kind of had that, um, that baby bat syndrome to where I felt like, you know, oh, if, if, as long as I don't say anything, they won't know that I might not belong. And deep down I knew that I did, but I really felt intimidated and I felt at a disadvantage because here are these people, they know the music, they've been involved for so long and they're so confident and they look amazing. And you know, whereas I may have thought I looked cool when I left the house, I just looked like a scraggly old mess amongst my, my people. So I sat and I kind of watched and every now and again, I would get in a conversation with people at the clubs and everything. And it was important for me and it, was enriching 
in ways that I couldn't get in any other situation. You know, being involved in activities other than school, that's where your life experience comes in. I learned more about vocabulary in a goth club than I did my whole four years of high school. And that's the truth. One of the most prized sort of attributes of a goth was intelligence. Having an expansive vocabulary, being well-read. And I dare not speak for fear of sounding like a moron. Because where I've never really been an idiot, you know, I'm pretty perceptive. I understand what's going on around me. I was also a very inexperienced kid and I nowhere near had the vocabulary of those around me. So I listened a lot. I listened, I learned. And it's these kinds of things that were so important to be able to experience then because, I mean, when better to experience these social activities and make these amazing memories than when you're a kid. You have no responsibilities. You don't have rent. You don't have bills. You don't have a mortgage. You don't have student loans. You don't have any of these things. It's when you are absolutely carefree and you can focus on building up who you are as a human being. And what is very upsetting is the fact that nowadays there is no more 18 to enter, 21 to drink. And that means that you must be 21 years old to be able to actually go to an event for the first time. And a lot of people are getting involved in the goth subculture at a very young age. And being that they're getting involved at a very young age, these are their formative years. These are the years where they're coming into their own. And they would most benefit from these experiences. They would most benefit from being able to integrate with other people within the subculture. Because what happens when you wait and there's something out there, something that you want, something big. And the more you put it off, the bigger it becomes and the more you begin to kind of fear it and develop anxiety as a result. And you start to build it up into something that it's really not in your head. And what ends up happening, and it's something I see so often, is you have a lot of people who have such anxiety about the subculture, about attending events, because they've had all these years to build it up in their head when it's really not that big a deal. It's a big deal in terms of how awesome it is, but it's not a big deal in terms of any detriment. So a lot of what's experienced online within the subculture, a lot of what people are experiencing, their first experiences with the subculture are here. It's online. It's Reddit. It's Facebook. It's any social media sort of network that you can possibly find. This is their first experience. And what do we have online a lot of? We got trolls, you got assholes, you have people that are too big for their britches, you have attitudes, you have uh, people just making up these crazy rules, and of course you have misinformation, so there's a lot of stuff out there that can be very overwhelming. And when you have people who are typically pretentious and so rule-oriented to the point where they just build it up to be this scientific formula and put people off, that is going to scare the ever-loving crap out of baby bats. And by the time they're old enough to go to a club, if they make it that far, they don't want to go. They are terrified because if they're experiencing that to this degree online, why the hell would they expose themselves to a situation where now they got to put up with it in person and there's no escape? If I were a baby bat now and I were forced to interact with the goth scene only online, until I'm basically old enough to be drowning in student debt and then I'm old enough to go out after I'm fairly jaded, I would have social anxiety too about integrating. I really would. So I think that that's a really huge issue to have. I think it's a big issue. The fact that we don't have any more 18 to enter, 21 to drink events. And something needs to be done about that. There needs to be events where people who are younger are able to be exposed to the goth subculture safely, in a safe environment. That's why I've often encouraged people to have things like house parties and teach you how, kind of how to recreate the club experience, but safely. Involve the parents if you're living at home. Um, it's always good to have chaperones. It's good to have family, like your parents there, because if you do not, um, you're going to get into a lot of trouble and you could potentially put yourself into some dangerous and unsafe situations. So if you're gonna have a house party, you wanna have people around, you wanna have your, your parents around. Have the homeowners be in the know. 
so that um, no dodgy dealings can go on. And you want to be able to do it again because if you get to have a house party, parents are around, you're respectful, you clean up after yourselves, and you have a great time, guess what? You can do it again after that because the parents realize it's not that big a deal. And a lot of times with the way parents are, they like to know where their kids are. Because if you're out roaming the streets, Lord knows what you could be up to, but you're here you are, and you're in their house. So they typically tend to feel a lot safer knowing that. And if you can show that you are a responsible person and you can clean up after yourself and you can conduct yourselves as well-behaved human beings and not trash the place, you get to have it again. And this is helpful. But I don't know how one would go about trying to bring that sort of thing back because that's something from the 90s that I really would bring back that I think would be so beneficial is to be able to have events that younger people, you know, when you still have your nerve and before you build it up into something big and you don't want to go anymore, while you still have that nerve and you can go out. Because when I used to go, when I was younger, I had so much fun. I would get like this anxiety in my stomach and my friend named it, she called it club anticipation. And you would feel just this anxiety, but it was, a, it was a happy anxiety. You're feeling that anxiety in your stomach the whole way there. You're shaking at the door, but then you walk into the club and suddenly all that anxiety disappears, but it morphs into excitement because here you are amongst your people. You're looking around, everybody looks amazing and you're hearing the music and you're just among your people. It's one thing listening to your favorite tracks in your room, dancing around, drawing, doing whatever it is that you do but it's an entirely different feeling when you're hearing it on a really great sound system, super loud, surrounded by your people. I remember first going to the clubs and sometimes hearing songs that I was completely captured by. And I'm like, I must know who this is, but I will not ask that DJ because if I go and ask the DJ, then everyone will know that I have no idea who this band is. And that was something that was really important because the music, as you know, is the, the heart, the soul, the gut, the core of the subculture. There was always the matter of feeling at a disadvantage when you didn't know things. See, nowadays, since a lot of it's based online, it's very much aesthetically oriented to where if people don't have the right clothes, the right look, the right hair, then that is what makes them feel at a disadvantage. But it was never like that back then. People dressed up to varying degrees, and it was really fun to dress up. Don't fashion has always been part and parcel when it came to the goth scene, and everyone did dress up to varying degrees. It didn't determine your place within the subculture. Your place within the subculture was determined by the music that we listened to. And if you were pure aesthetic, you didn't last long. But it was a lot harder to put up that kind of false front in person because what really did you have in common with everyone else around you? What did you talk about? Now, unless you were there because you just liked everybody and you just came because these were your friends, that was one thing. But when it came to kind of masquerading as a goth or being a weekender, those people never really lasted long. I don't really know where I'm going with that but these are all kind of thoughts that came up. Fashion has really always been a part of the subculture. And whereas music is the core, it's not all there is to the subculture. However, it can't live without it. It can't survive without it. It's like ripping out someone's heart. They're just gonna <laughs> drop to the floor dead. So goth is very much the same. You remove the heart, can't function. And it's really the same concept. However, there's a bunch of other things that keep the systems kind of flowing. And, you know, fashion might be part of that in some degree. I mean, we see a goth walking down the street. We know a goth. I mean, it's a little bit harder now considering it's kind of on trend to, uh, to be goth or at least to look goth and have the label. But it's harder to tell nowadays. Back in the day, you could just see someone in a black t-shirt and you knew a goth right away. It's like, that's one of us. But nowadays, it's a little bit harder. And in the end, the only thing that goths really tend to want is to kind of be able to listen to their music and be among their people. And it's difficult to kind of, to have that when one, you're new, and two, you find it really difficult to find your music and your people. And that really has to do with the whole concept of goth being the trendy thing that it is now, particularly, you know, the mainstream taking an interest because what happens when the internet becomes involved, you put things in a fishbowl and goth is very much placed within a fishbowl. And when you have millions of eyes upon it, that means that it's open to everyone's interpretation. And unfortunately, 
when everyone has their own idea of what they're looking at, what happens is those ideas become sticky when it comes to us because those ideas from people that are outside, it attaches itself to us. And in that respect, it was in many ways a lot easier for goths before the internet fully became involved the way that it did because they didn't really know much about the subculture, only bits and pieces ba based on what they saw. And those bits and pieces, some of the things were absolutely hilarious. For one thing, in the 90s, they thought everybody were vampires. They were convinced that we were vampires and that we were witches. Um, I remember one instance was really funny. My friend and I, we were going out to a goth club that weekend. And for whatever reason, we had to stop at her brother-in-law's house because we had to pick something up. And he was as normal as normal could be. And we stopped there and he was just kind of making small talk. And he's like, so what are you up to this weekend? And she's like, oh, we're going to a club. And obviously we're standing there, we're goths. And he's like, oh, you're going to one of those, those goth clubs, huh? And straight face, he was dead serious. He said, so what do you do? Do you like, you know, you put on a wedding dress and you go there and you like spin around? Because there's nothing out there pertaining to goth. You have to understand this is like late 90s, early 2000s. So when it came to goth, mainstream getting in touch with goth, it, it really, it, it didn't really exist on the internet until fairly recently. I want to say within the last decade. But if you look at it now, look at all the misconceptions that exist about us now. And a lot of those misconceptions come from people who are really very interested in the look and the title and they just kind of decide what it is. They make it up for themselves and they have no desire, no inclination to really look it up and, and learn what it is. They don't care. They just care about what it looks like. They just, it's like watching a show on mute. What's the point? You have no idea what's going on. You're just gonna look at it. You're not gonna put on subtitles, nothing. So it's, it's really very much the same thing. They just like the look, they like the title and they just kind of go with that. And that's really where all of the misinformation comes from. So the misinformation that exists now is by far more dangerous than it was back in the day. Um, I mean, I really shouldn't say that because when satanic panic got involved, there was a whole different kind of dangerous. But nowadays it's dangerous in different ways. It's dangerous. Um, it's more dangerous for women because of the misconceptions that are put out there. I mean, it's, it's scary, but if you look it up on TikTok, there's countless TikToks from all these kind of like gross normie gym bros that post these things about how to choke a goth girl. And they genuinely believe that this is what we're about, that this is what we want. And it it's scary because of what's put out there. There are these sort of misconceptions that this is how we want to be treated. This is how you approach us. And that's why it's a lot more dangerous for us. It's dangerous for girls in general with a lot of things. But when the misconceptions come with goth girls, it's more dangerous because there are a lot of ideas floating around about us that we want to be injured. We like bodily harm. We invite it. We want to be victims of things. And that's why a lot of it is particularly dangerous to us because people believe it. Not just that where women and women are typically more preyed upon than the men, it's that goth women in general, we are perceived as people who want to be dominated. I know I said it in a previous video, but I was approached once because I was wearing a dog collar. Somebody tried to put a leash on me. Who, in, in what universe is that kind of thing okay to do to somebody? And somebody else had asked me when I said that, you know, that's that's typical, that, that's an attack, that's a crime. Why didn't you report that? Uh, the reason I didn't is because the time that it was. This was in the 90s. This was during a time where I would have been laughed at should I reported it. It was during a time that if I reported it to my school, I would have been immediately told, well, what did you expect? You're walking around wearing a dog collar. Why wouldn't you expect somebody to come up and put a leash on you? So I would have been blamed for that. I think nowadays it would be taken a lot more seriously, but certainly not back then. I've had a lot of time to think about all of the questions that were asked, pretty much because right after I made that video, I got COVID and I'm just sitting here stuck in my house and you can't go out, you can't do anything, and you're not able to really fully interact with the outside world. And I've been talking to people on the phone and stuff, 
but I got winded easily. I had a fever, so it was a lot of just resting and things. And whenever I got the energy, whenever my day quill kicked in, I would kind of just go nuts and go around the house and try to do as many tasks as I possibly could, like clean, take out the garbage, take my dog for a walk before the medication wore off and I'd be down for the count again. But during that time, I also took the opportunity to edit the second part of the Q&A and that's when I really got introspective. And it's funny, my friend Vanessa just recently got over COVID and it made her very introspective and now I, I see why. You're stuck inside with your thoughts and I had basically everybody's questions echoing in my head and I did the Q&A very off the cuff, but what happens as you're editing and then afterward, you think of more answers or you elaborate in your head. And a lot of that took place. So when I was younger and people had these sort of misconceptions about what goth is and all of these different things, it came from TV because eventually TV shows would suddenly like one of the main characters or even an outside character would suddenly pop up goth. I think one of the sons on the show Home Improvement, he went goth goth <laughs> and it was tv's version of what goth is and back then it's just it was far worse than it is now but back then it was a lot of black lipstick and spiked collars and a lot of what people would perceive today as mall goth and that's another question that i got like somebody asked me and i didn't get a chance to answer it and they asked me what did i think now that mall goth was making a comeback here's the thing about that something would have to originally exist to be able to make a comeback in the first place and it didn't mall goth was never a thing and the way that i view mall goth is the same way that i view everybody taking a word and putting core on the end of it like you have goth core and, and mall core and crap core you have all these different cores and i view mall goth in the same way so the way that people view it you're either viewing it from two different perspectives you're viewing it from outside the subculture or you're viewing it as a person who wasn't there in the first place. You weren't there in the 90s or the early 2000s. So that being said, you're looking at two different people, column A, column B, two different people wearing black and assuming that they're one and the same when in fact one's a goth and the other one is either like a new metal or a Mansonite. So that's a lot of what you're seeing. So if you kind of Google mall goth and look at the images that you find, you'll find a mishmash of people, some of them are actual pictures of goths from the 90s and the early 2000s and the rest I would say the majority are new metal kids kids that listen to insane clown posse who listen to slipknot who listen to white zombie and Marilyn Manson and they were very different from the goths we were not the same not the same subculture we didn't go to the same places we didn't listen to the same music but if you looked at the styles there was very much very much a difference between the two styles but I guess if you're outside the subculture it would be a lot more difficult for you to perceive because all you're really seeing are just you know some people dressed in black but there was a difference so uh, my feelings about Ma Goth making a comeback um, I don't have any feelings about it in general because it never really existed in the first place it wasn't really a thing now the new metal kids I mean you'd find them at the mall a lot but they certainly weren't goths and the goths where as we shopped at the mall every now and again we certainly didn't hang out there like it wasn't our our chill zone so to speak <laughs> we did other stuff so um mall goth unfortunately i know a lot of you may feel shocked or, or disagree but if you only if you were around back then you really know that it never it wasn't a thing there was no such thing as mall goth so i'm sorry about that <laughs> So I hope I cleared a few things up, but also I really wanted to help instill the importance of people integrating before you're 21 years old. It's important that everybody get together, but it's also important that you remain safe. Don't put yourself in any situation where you're meeting people for the first time in person without any parental units around. You don't want to do anything like that because you don't know other people's intentions. You want to stay safe. And if you do, try to have a house party. You know, invite people you know, friends, people that are close in age. Start from there. And as far as, as finding things that are 18 and over again, I'm working on it. <laughs> I've been 
looking into various ways to try to integrate that again, but I don't know where it went. It was there for ages, and then suddenly when it didn't pertain to me anymore because I was above 21 anyway, it just kind of disappeared without anybody knowing. And now you've got to be married with four kids and a mortgage to be able to go to a goth club, and that's ridiculous. We're supposed to have fun when we don't have any responsibilities, when we can be carefree and we don't have to worry about any of these things. We All we want to know is right now. We just want to live in the very moment. And that's what's really important to be able to live in that very moment. Because you want to be able to go home to your parents' house because you're a teenager and you're their responsibility, knowing that your only responsibilities is homework, handing in essays, making sure that you make curfew, keeping your room clean, and maybe a part-time job. And that is the extent of your responsibilities because your future is out there. It's gonna happen. You're gonna have rent, you're gonna have a mortgage, you're gonna have student loans, you're gonna have stupid responsibilities and it's gonna suck. But before all of that stress hits, what's important is this moment right now when you're able to do those things because these are moments that you're never gonna get back. And you're going to look back on them and be like, God, it really sucked because I didn't get to do any of the things that I want to do. And it's important that if you can't do them, you find workarounds. You find a way to enjoy that time, enjoy those moments, and let yourself learn and be enriched by it and just absorb all of the amazing energy from the people and the music and the experiences and the memories. Believe me, having those memories, they're priceless and take pictures, take a million pictures. I did, and unfortunately, back in the 90s when you have disposable cameras and you take pictures, prints happen, and you have to keep those prints safe. There's no cloud to put them in, and you know what happens when friends get mad at you in the 90s? They don't attack you, they attack your memories. So they would go after my pictures and destroy them. I had countless pictures destroyed, and I wish. I sometimes have dreams that I find them intact and God, I would give anything to have those again, just to kind of look at those moments and just remember them in each photo. With all that being said, keep your memories safe, keep them sacred, keep yourself safe, whatever it is that you choose to do in your endeavors and in exploring goth, keep yourself safe. Uh, I don't know what this video is. I don't know what I did, but I did it. And uh, with that, I will see you next time. Bye.